and we are recording with Mike in space. How are you, Mike? Doing great, Sonny. <laughs> yeah, nice to nice to connect. Uh, yeah, you know, um, it's been a while, uh, yeah. but I, I like to normally start with where we first met. Do you remember? By I, do, I do. I do. Um, so we okay. first met like briefly at one of the events you had thrown, um, just talking and passing. But um, when we really kind of met, I think we, we sat down for coffee once. I wanted to uh, present at one of your uh, one of your events. And so you said, hey, let's go for coffee and talk about it. And we did. And then I, I ended up uh, doing um, a little kind of comedy bit during like the, the lunch presentation uh, of, of one of your conferences. So yeah, yeah, we, we bet over coffee, I would say. Yeah, I remember that actually. I remember that, and uh, yeah, we're gonna. I guess we're, let's let's get into that. Um, and so, as I was mentioning to you just before this, uh, is that kind of one of my goals is just to article, you know, people's stories. I, I I've been in this space since twenty. I don't even know what now, but it's 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 just every day feels like a movie. And yeah. for the longest time, I used to tell people, someday I'm going to make a Bollywood movie about all this, and then I'll, I'll just perfect. give it to you. <laughs> That's the perfect format. Right? Now that I think about it, yeah, Bollywood it would be the perfect format for this. Right. But, Absolutely. But, but, but then, but then I was like, wait, like, why wait, you know, till yeah. like, who knows when? And like, I don't even think a four hour movie is going to be able to capture, <laughs> like, you know, all the drama in our space. So I was like, you know yeah. what, I'll just try to, I'll just start a daily whatever this is like an interview right. vlog type of thing and uh, and as you know like uh, you know the events was something that I, I i never did it to make money i actually lost tremendous amounts of money to really? be honest i mean they were the biggest in toronto for quite a while right <laughs> yeah because i was losing money on them <laughs> oh. <laughs> no 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 i don't i think the last one i think that one the the one you just mentioned yeah. um I think it was in 2017. I literally lost like on a personal note, like a hundred grand or something on that Ooh, event. <laughs> wow. Because you know why? Because I was, uh, it was the Oprah move. It was the books. Remember the books? books? Yeah. Was it the Don Tapscott? Tapscott. Yeah, yeah. Chris, uh, I forget his name. Um, sorry, it escapes my mind. Uh, crypto Assets. Okay. The author yeah. of Crypto Assets. And so I, I remember I made some book deals and then it was the hotel. That was really what hurt uh yeah the, the oh you're putting everyone up in, oh, okay right uh, yeah. putting them up and it just yeah, got yeah. really really expensive and you know you know you remember i don't know if you remember the early days mars right we used to do them at yeah. mars yeah i was there and they were fantastic they were just yeah. like pizza samosa call it a day you know three hour evening gigs on a tuesday but then they just got out of hand then when the sheridan thing came into picture it's just uh yeah, and so I took a lot of that energy and just thought, hey, why not just, you know, you know, connect with people and and start start articling people, you know, and, and like I said, I, I, I feel like I have a fantastic story, but then I was like, wait, if I have such an interesting story, I wonder what other people's stories are like. I started realizing that everybody's got like, you know, a unique story and so get you know, ready to I, be disappointed right right I, well, I, i'm sure you're, you're gonna help me with that but uh <laughs> but anyway so what so what is your story what, what are you right are what you? am i like, who am i the man behind yeah the car yeah yeah okay so i mean my story started early 2013 um quite honestly i i find that a little late because i really should have picked up on Bitcoin earlier than 2013, because in the early 2000s, I was big into the whole decentralized scene with like BitTorrent and, and Napster and all that stuff. And it just seemed like really in my wheel. Are, are you from to, Toronto? I am. I am. You're from Toronto. You're born, born and raised. raised in Toronto. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and the, I guess just curious, like before coming into Bitcoin, what was yeah. your lens? Were you like a, a nerdy kid? Were you like more like, uh, yeah, yeah, that sums it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Absolutely. But I mean, in the early two thousands, it's like, uh, Nutella and Napster and the whole decentralized scene was kind of emerging. And it's like, I really kicked myself for not picking up on Bitcoin earlier, but unfortunately I didn't find out about it until early 2013. Mm. And I mean, by that point, I was just like, it was, you know, it was amazing. And I bought a big bit of Bitcoin in early 2013 and, and really followed it for a couple of years, but like was on the sidelines, I would say. And it wasn't until around 2016 or so that I kind of 
made myself into a bit of a personality on Twitter and, and YouTube. Um, you probably recall the podcast Bitcoin Uncensored with Krista Rose and Junseth, right? I think you were even on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah, that. so I mean, I love I love that podcast, and and they kind of highlighted some of the the stuff I was doing at the time, right? And that's when I kind of started to become a content creator, basically. And uh, my kind of like little niche was doing uh, crypto comedy, for lack of a better word, with uh, Bitcoin Card Talk. It was like a series of skits I did with prominent Bitcoin people in sort of like zany circumstances. So that was sort of my contribution to the space, kind of doing comedy, right? Um, and, and I, you know, Twitter, Twitter, I guess I'm on Twitter a lot. So yeah, um, that's sort of my story, I would say. Uh, I've, I've done some YouTube content, I've done a few uh, conferences, I've done yours, I've done a few others. Um, and here we are today. I'm a, I'm a longtime hodler and uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. What's that? What's that hat you got on, buddy? This is uh, this is the uh, the open dime hat. Uh, I think it's let me see. I can't even see it. Well, I think it says no. Don't, don't trust, trust verify. Don't trust verify. Right? Yeah. Have you gotten stuff a, a cold card yet, or? I do have a cold card. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got all those artifacts, right? Uh, for my my little Bitcoin shrine, I've got all. I've got the treasure. I've got the open dime. I've got the cold card. Got it. So all. so so okay. So, so talk to people. So, okay, so back up here. So Bitcoin. But what what was it that caught your fancy about Bitcoin? I mean, twenty thirteen. I mean, honestly, it was, it was just like the FOMO. I mean, I think a lot of people are- The FOMO, the price. And that's what everyone's drawn in by, right? You see this and it's at the time it was about, I don't know, $150 or so. But it had, you know, in 2011, it was $3. And, you know, you're looking at these headlines and you're like, wow, this is an interesting project. And it's like, it's $150 now. Maybe I'll invest a bit and maybe it'll go up further. That's what kind of draws you in. And then you're enticed by just- you know, the space itself, the, the whole, like the com community aspect of it. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's the most amazing kind of community dynamic I've ever kind of seen. You don't really see this with other sorts of technologies where people are just so devoted to it. And it's just, it's something to behold. And that I really, that's really, that's what kept me kind of engaged with it, you know? Those two guys you mentioned too, yeah. uh, Chris DeRose yeah. and Judge John Seth, Seth right? What, the, the John Seth, he got married oh. recently or a long time ago or something. I don't I know. I saw recently. something on yeah, Twitter yeah. recently. Okay. Recently, yeah. And and Chris DeRose. But why, those those guys were like, you know, they were quite the pair. Yeah. Like they were creating art straight up. Like every time I remember they were, their episodes were so engaging and – I just couldn't stop watching, but then at one point, I guess they just decided to stop. <laughs> yeah, and no one, no one really, yeah. no one really filled their mantle, did they? Like, I'm trying to think no. like that slapstick kind of like in your face. There's you a know lot what of I mean? like, yeah. There's not only intelligent that. humor. Yeah, exactly, and a bit of skepticism. I mean, they were both Bitcoiners, but mm. they brought skepticism to it, right? And mm. that that is what I think is missing right now. Like, there's a lot of great podcasts out there. I think Peter McCormick does a great podcast. A lot mm. of people do great podcasts. But what's missing is that sort of skeptic eye, because I think you still, that's the, a, an important critical component of Bitcoin. The fact that there are there are more skeptics in Bitcoin than any other crypto community, I think. And I think that's the benefit of Bitcoin. You know, it hardens Bitcoin, right? It, it's, it, it, you know, the, without that, it's, you know, you, 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 you're likely to fall prey to becoming just like, you know, like a cult at, at a certain point, you know, you become do, do you, like, yeah. Do you worry about that though? Because I do, I mean, did you see Michael Saylor's recent tweet, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. about um, what is it? And then, and then I, I don't even remember how to pronounce that, that recent guy, Raul something, something. Raul Paul. Yeah. That, and yeah, yeah. yeah. They're there. I mean, this is institutional money. This is the gentrification of Bitcoin. And I mean, in one way it's good. It's attracting more people into Bitcoin and it's, you know, number go up. Everyone loves number go up, but it's like, I don't know if it's good for the long term, you know, for long term for Bitcoin. You know, it's like if you read some of Sailor's tweets, like he's very much establishment and about, you know, we've got mm -hmm. to, you know, we've got to make nice with the with the regulators and all this stuff. And it's like, well, I mean, what is the value proposition of Bitcoin? I mean, 
is uh, scarce numbers is one thing, you know, we all, you know, 21 million, it's, it's, it's important, but censorship resistance is also very, very important. And I think without that, it, the whole house falls apart. You know, it's, uh, are you following some of this, like, Oh, what is it called? Stable act or something? Yeah. The stable act. And, yeah. And, and I mean, I'm kind of just catching bits and pieces of it on Twitter, but like, is it, is it saying something along the lines that like running a node is, is going to be a lot of people are what? reading into, they haven't said that explicitly, but yes, mm. a lot of people are reading into that, that, you know, it might make running a node illegal. I mean, I, I can't imagine this bill would ever pass because that's like such an infringement on like on on your basic rights. It's like when I can't run software anymore. Uh, <laughs> but it's like that. I mean, that could be the path we're headed down. I mean, it's it's it is. I mean, I'm scary. just kind of, I'm kind of diving into a bunch of like really deep things right now. Um, but right. like, but did you also see what Rodolfo tweeted yesterday? <laughs> what, what did he tweet? I, I follow him, but about 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 uh, just the finance minister and her comments around. Yeah, Freeland. Uh, yeah, I tweeted that too. It's, it's like, yeah, she's about. She was talking about like um, getting in, uh, getting into people, unlocking people's savings. Right. We need we 100%. need to pay for the. It's like you know what other people. She was making the argument that, you know, wealthy people have been able to save during this pandemic, and that's rightfully someone's paycheck. So how dare you save your money when, you know, someone could be benefiting from that? It's like, but, we're, what, we're is heading, she, yeah. but what is she implying? Because I, I was, I, I interviewed yeah. um, Sebastian the other day, and he, he, he is from Argentina, and he was talking about a wealth tax. Have you heard about this? I it's mean, a wealth I, tax. So it's like whatever your wealth is, X percentage of it uh, comes to us. And we're we're, we're we're heading down that path. I mean, in Toronto, I mean, for the international audience, they might not be aware of this, but within Toronto, they're also already talking about like a vacant home tax. So if you happen to have some properties and you're not renting them out for whatever reason, maybe mm. part of the reason you're not renting them out is because at the moment you can't really evict a tenant. So it's not a great situation for landlords. So if you have a property or two that is sitting vacant, they're now gonna tax you on that. An additional tax above property taxes. And then in a way that is sort of a wealth tax. It's like, they. I mean, I, I kind of understand it. It's like, we're deep in the hole with this pandemic. We're uh, three, $400 billion in debt. They're gonna have to try and make it up somehow. Mm. But it's like, yeah, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm getting a little worried. It's like, I would not, I think uh, you definitely need some exposure to Bitcoin at this point, specifically as a Canadian. It's like, get, get some Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, man, it's pretty crazy. I'm, I'm actually getting a lot of friends from like 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, like the, the ones that have been sitting on the sidelines that were. Well, because number go up, of course, you're going to get the calls now, right? They weren't calling in March when the price was. Yeah. five thousand or whatever it was and they're all and and they're all about the michael saylor hype you know and yeah like and they've got all of this now like uh you know i'm happy about it but it's like this institutional knowledge about how they're all gonna start coming in and there's gonna be this like time yeah. delay and, da, 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 da. and i was like wow I'm like wow this is this is pretty impressive i'm like but you know um there's like a better place to learn about it it's called the bitcoin white paper it's been available since the beginning of time and you just look the code as well. And, right. uh, but uh, anyways, whatever, I guess it is what it is, you know? Um, so I was going to say in terms of comedy, right? So Bitcoin and comedy, um, what, what's going on out there right now? Are, is there anything that even like is on your radar? Are you are like, and by the way, are you creating, I, I looked through your, and your I, channel, I yeah, I mean, podcasts and stuff, but like what's, yeah. what's going on out there? Not, not a whole lot, right? Not that so, I can think so of. So what I found out early on uh, mm. is that people are not here for the comedy. Surprisingly, I started making comedy skits and it's like, yeah, I guess people aren't really here for that. They're here to make money. So the, it is a bit of a niche, right? Uh, I think Brian Hoffman does some great comedy videos. He just released one recently. Uh, I've done a few things, uh, but at, it is a very kind of niche thing within crypto, right? I, I don't think there is a, really a lot of comedy because I, I don't think that's why people are generally here. They're here for either sound money or they're traders. You know, they're, they're here for other reasons. Yeah. That could be it. That could be it. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I don't know. I also wonder if uh, maybe it's we're just a bit too early, you know, like uh, this thing keeps doing what it's doing. Um, right. 
who knows? Maybe they'll be just like, I mean, if Bitcoin is truly the future of money and you fast forward out 20 years from now, like you yeah. imagine there'd be like people singing about it and like making movies yeah. about it. Like even now, like there seems to be like, a, like definitely an onslaught of uh, like podcasts yeah. and all that kind of. Uh, well, like, there's that girl who does the dancing, the bit, bit fit dance so girl, good. right? So yeah. so there, that's comedy, I guess. <laughs> I, I, well, I guess I know. We hold on to say that comedy doesn't exist in Bitcoin would be false because no, that's true. It's that's like true. the land of memes. Like, yeah, absolutely. there is yeah. so much. But but you know what though? I just realized like someone should do a show on just like the commentary around that. Like, if you just made like a ten minute YouTube video on like all the crazy nonsense yeah. that I see on Reddit every day, <laughs> it's amazing. It's like that's why it's, I it's mean jokes. It's More jokes. than the money, it's like, it, this is why I'm so captivated by this space. It's, it's right. It's incredible. It's it's like watching WWE in, in some ways, right? It's like, it's it's sports for WWE. fans. Right? <laughs> Uh, yeah that's more like ethereum i'd say but yeah yeah <laughs> maybe ufc no yeah, yeah. <laughs> i actually i actually um get a lot of solace from from watching ufc it, it's like the only thing outside of bitcoin that i feel is kind of like bitcoin you know what i mean like two dudes in a cage like literally like fight to the death type of deal and it's like it's kind of like oh, it's like Bitcoin Twitter. That that's that's what that's right, going yeah. down every day. People are literally chopping people's heads off, and people can be pretty mean. And there is this like I don't know how do you want to say it, but like almost like an you, have you ever seen the show American Gladiator? Yeah, yeah. Remember those like like those really big dudes like that that just like stand there and kind of I kind of feel like Bitcoin's got a lot of those people, and it's like almost impossible. Like like and I can I can almost see like. The Raul is kind of getting through most of them. And then now they're like, oh, well, XRP is pretty good too. And then all of a sudden, boom, yeah. and they got the face. And then it's like, well, you know, maybe there's these other chick coins that are not, bam. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter is the app where I'm like constantly saying, I'm going to delete this from my phone. I can't have Twitter on here anymore. But it's like, I can't stay away. I don't know what it is. I've deleted, I've deleted it several. Yeah. I even, I'm looking over at a book called Deep Work. I read that book. Epiphany. I deleted every social media app on my phone. Yeah, that's smart. Twitter, like 30 minutes later, made it back way out its back just because <laughs> it, it's almost impossible to keep yeah. that thing off. It's so addicting. It's so addicting. They've designed it that way. I mean, it's just how you get the notifications and everything else. Like, it's designed to addict you. It's it's crazy. But actually, I had a really awful thing happen to me the other day on with Twitter. I I did the most embarrassing, terrible thing. I I I, I was um, trying to set the birth date of our company Unocoin account to the birth right. date of the company. Okay. Which was like in 2013 or 2012 or whatever it was. And as soon as as soon as I did it, Twitter was like, "You're underage. You're All locked right. out. Yeah. You're not yeah, getting makes... access anymore." Like I couldn't even be like, "Do I?" I it, like it just right. cut me off and it was a bit scary because like like we have a lot of people that you right. know kind of count on twitter as like a source of information to like to keep up to date with what's going on and dude i i, I mean i've i've even met like jack dorsey uh in the past and so i even had his email right. i literally like hit him up along with all the other like you know administrative things and then I go on YouTube and I see Jack in front of all the like the regulators and the politicians. You know, last week they were in front of. So I was like, okay, so he's not going to get to my email, obviously. Right. So like, what do I do? I just wait here, and for like almost two weeks, it was like nothing. It was like uh, crickets. And then finally, you know, randomly it just fixed itself. But yeah, I. I but Twitter is something that is kind of like the lifeblood of you know like it's like it's like the lifeblood of i don't know like how most people get information nowadays and it's yeah. pretty alarming <clears throat> like how uh how important it is you know and then like how much like how much we depend on it like is, considering we talk about decentralization and all this stuff like it's pretty centralized a lot of these you know yeah well um, news breaks there where the president the, the most powerful man in the world you know he he just everything comes out on Twitter. I mean, it, it's the focal point, right? It's like- hey, Anyway, I know I'm kind of jumping around, but are you following what's going on in the US right now at all? I mean, um, as much as anyone else, absolutely, yeah. 
You are? Um, uh, that's all good. Uh, <laughs> I think the visitors. Okay. <laughs> you will be a pause it for us if you want. All right, just for a second. Yeah, yeah. So, are you following any of this stuff down in the United States? Like, what's going on with any of this, or are you too? Busy yeah, I mean, it? no, no, not at all. I mean, it's. I mean, they're contesting all the results, right? I think they've got several lawsuits. They're they're calling it a fraudulent election. I don't know where I fall on that. I mean, I think a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a lot of kind of you know ballot stuffing happening. But at the end of the day, I think probably Biden did win because um, he had, I mean, if you're not looking at like the electoral electoral map, if you just look at the popular vote, he had like 7 million votes more than Trump. So I think ultimately, even with, you know, the ballots, the theoretical ballot stuffing, I think uh, Biden probably still did win, but it's good that they're looking into it. Uh, I have no problem with that. I know a lot of people are saying, well, Trump's Trump just needs to accept it, right? He needs to accept his loss. And like, I mean, you look at Gore in 2000, he didn't accept it immediately. I mean, he he accepted it like in December of 2000. So he waited for the, the court process to proceed. And then, you know, and then finally he, he accepted the loss. So I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to tell. But I've been watching a little bit of it. And it's pretty, pretty alarming. Um, yeah. Like some of the evidence and like they literally have video, dude. Yeah, video. I saw that. Yeah. Video. It's not like with the, hearsay. With the, like with suitcases. Yeah, I brought I up my that. brother the other day. There's like, ah, whatever. It's not a big deal. I'm like, no, there's there's video of people bringing in like boxes full of ballots, like yeah, across yeah. the state, like states, like all over. It's uh, it's pretty interesting stuff. But anyway, so yeah, yeah, go ahead. But I guess I guess what I'm getting at is, is like voting, uh, yeah. Twitter. Like, do you think these things eventually will find themselves? I mean, like Twitter themselves have something called blue sky, right? Where they're trying to like decentralize Twitter. I do don't think understand. Things- I, I know that's their their re- re- rhetoric right now. And, and Jack has talked about that. But it's like, how would that like they have shareholders, they have a multi billion dollar business. How do they pivot to like sort of a decentralized platform like that and still retain their value i i I don't know that's a good question ico no i'm kidding (laughs) (laughs) uh actually speaking of comedy you you know i remember you were you and i we both kind of lived through that era right of uh of ico land yeah yeah uh like what what, i guess like any 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 thoughts on that and then anything in terms of like DeFi, does it remind yeah. you of that? Or oh, absolutely. Feel like it's I mean, totally different this time around. Like, is it? No, uh, it's more nuts. I think at the time ICOs made no sense and I couldn't believe like billions of dollars were going into it at the time. And DeFi is even more nuts than that. It's just insane. And I, it's, it's, you know what? It's like, sometimes I try and explain this stuff to normies and it's like, I'm a loss for, I'm at a loss for words because it's like the concepts are just so foreign when you talk about like, Uniswap, Uniswap, and Sushi Swap, and 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 yield mining, and or yield farming, and all these things that they're just they're alien concepts, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. it. I don't even I don't even know how to wrap my head around it. Quite honestly, are, are you? Uh, did you get into the Ethereum presale? Like, are you? Are you? No, head I. I no, no. Uh, big regret, obviously. I mean, that yeah, would be right? wonderful, <laughs> right? I, I I lived through it, right? Yeah. I, it's yeah. like, what was it like? one Bitcoin would have got you 2000 Ethereum or something uh, in 2014, or whatever the pre-sale price was, that would have been nice. But no, um, no, I, I wasn't involved in it. Um, I've, I've always been a Bitcoin holder. Um, yeah. What's your, what's your thoughts on Ethereum in general? I mean, that's like a topic that I generally, right. I don't know. I mean, it comes up quite a bit. Like, do you, do you think it's like good that, that generally they exist so that it, you know, it's like, I mean, it's, they've obviously I, done well. No, no. I, um, I, I, I think, no, I definitely think it's good. They exist. I'm not one of these guys. Like I'm not a Bitcoiner who thinks that all altcoins need to die. Mm. I think competition is good. I think it makes Bitcoin stronger. Right. I think it's good that Ethereum exists. I don't, I don't invest in Ethereum. I'm, I'm not sure what the value proposition there is because it kind of seems centralized. And the whole point of a blockchain is sort of um, uh, sort of regulatory evasion in a sense, right? And it's like, well, you got a centralized party right there. So I, I don't really see the long-term value proposition of Ethereum. It could be a short-term, short-term pump, right? 
if you want to invest right now, maybe you'll make some money. I don't see how, how, how it works the long term, but it's good that it's, I don't have a problem with it existing. It's in fact, it probably makes Bitcoin stronger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, but but I gotta admit it's it's, it's and so and it's DeFi stuff. So yeah, you said it does remind you kind of a bit of the ICO, but uh, I mean it, it does, it does yeah. feel like it's a bit more sophisticated because ICO is oh, yeah. straight up like, here's a white paper, give us your money. Uh, right. Here it's like, wait, they're 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 kind of. I mean, it could be argued that they're solving, you know, some fundamental problems, right? Like decentralizing the exchange, you know, and putting yeah. that that onto the blockchain. Like that's, I don't see anything wrong with that, right? Even though, you know, I'm kind of in the centralized exchange yeah. business, I definitely see that as like a point of, um, you know, a vector of attack or whatever. Yeah, so, no, absolutely. So, I think, so yeah, yeah. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit like, you know, I've got a little bit of a um, do not compute or cannot compute thing going on in my brain right now, where it's like, I, I have all these narratives where I've defined Bitcoin to be obviously just, but then I do see innovation. Um, you know, one thing yeah. that kind of helps me um, reconcile these two worlds and I'm, I'm, tr- I'm looking through it, trying to figure out how relevant it might be, but have you heard of RSK? Yeah, of course, Rootstock, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on, on RSK? So it's because like a side, mean, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, a side yeah. chain, right? Now yeah. my thoughts are on, on, it launched a couple of years ago, but I mean, it's been crickets. I mean, does anyone yeah, use right? it? Yeah, so I mean, yeah. here's the thing. Oh, why? The, so I think, here's the thing. And it's it, Bitcoiners are following in follow uh, Bitcoiners are falling into this this trap where they don't realize Lindy effect and everything else that they've been espousing. So the whole point of why Bitcoin is number one is the Lindy mm. effect and all these things. And so we come up with this side chain called RSK that um, I think it, it it kind of has the same APIs as Ethereum, right? You can, you can run smart contracts on you it. You got it. You got but it. But it's like, so they're like, well, it's on it's on Bitcoin. So what's gonna succeed it? But Ethereum already has that kind of network effect and Lindy effect or whatever you want to call it for smart contracts. That's where the smart contracts, that's where the NFTs are happening. So yeah, you've built something on Bitcoin. It's a ghost town. No one wants to use it. Hmm. So I mean, but if Bitcoiners of all people should have realized this. Because that's what separates Bitcoin from all the altcoins. Mm. So, I mean, Ethereum won the smart contract. Now, whether or not smart contracts have any value is a separate argument. But if you want to talk about where the smart contracts are run, the ERC-20 tokens, the NFTs, that, that's all in the Ethereum ecosystem. I saw it start on Counterparty on Bitcoin, and Bitcoin didn't want it. Bitcoin was hostile towards it, at least the, the, the core devs, like they, they didn't want to increase the, the op return or whatever. And so all the NFT activity moved over to Ethereum and that, that's where it exists right now, right? Um, but, and that's just, that's just the way it is. Bitcoin wants to be the sound money. Bitcoin wants to be very minimalistic in its ambitions. It wants to be sound, and that's good. That, that actually, you know, having a single purpose might be the, the best route for Bitcoin. And, but it's also pushed off all these other theoretical use cases to other networks. And a lot of them have gone to Ethereum for good yeah. or for bad. Hey, well, now with the holidays coming around the corner, yeah. are you like, what, what, what is a conversation around the dinner table? Well, I mean, I guess now with COVID and all that, things are probably a bit different, right? Yeah. But, uh, well, I mean, with the price up, yeah. I mean, I hear I, my parents are like, oh, I saw Bitcoin was up in the news, right? So yeah, you, you hear all that stuff. But I mean, but what, what's your thing yeah. now? What's your like, I don't know, uh, like, are you just like, ah, I don't want to talk about it? Or no, you, I, I, I talk about like, it Satoshi? when Satoshi, like, if you don't have time, I don't have time. What is it? Yeah. What's that famous quote? I oh, if you, if you don't understand it, um, I don't have time to explain it to you sorry yeah, or something yeah, like but that. that's yeah. not like you so would you take no no i mean i i mean to be honest i've never been an evangelist i've never told anyone to buy bitcoin to be honest with you i think that's a path everyone has to take on their own right like i don't want to tell someone where they need to put their money right because these things are volatile number can go up number can go down i don't want to be responsible for that but if someone asks me i, I talk about it I, I give them what i perceive as an unbiased kind of review of Bitcoin, warts and all, um, you know, that there is tremendous upside, but there's also some theoretical systemic risk, right? There's regulatory with this whole stable act that, I mean, that could be bad for Bitcoin, you know, with, um, you know, uh, mining centralization, that could be bad for Bitcoin, you know, there's so, I mean, it's, 
personally, I'm invested in Bitcoin because I do see tremendous upside and I'm willing to take that risk. I don't know if I'm willing to um, ask others to take that risk. What, um, why do you see upside on, on, on Bitcoin? Um, well, I mean, I think there, I think, a, I don't know if institutional investment is great for Bitcoin, but it's great for a pump. I think there's going to be a lot of FOMO happening. I think there's a lot of awareness now that like MicroStrategy has put in like $450 million into Bitcoin and a lot of other companies are starting to do that. And then other funds start to wake up and see that. And it's just, it's this, 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 this herd effect. So I think, I think there definitely could be some upside to Bitcoin. And it's like, if you, if you want to compare Bitcoin to gold, I mean, gold's what an $11 trillion market cap and Bitcoin's a th- uh, 300 billion. If it even takes 10% of that, you've got like what a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. So, I mean, I think there's definitely upside there. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And would you have expected Mike, like back, you know, three years ago when we were um, hanging out at these events that the, you know, the M1 and the M2 money supply would be kind of where it is. And well, no, yeah. no one could, no one could predict this global pandemic. Right. And I, it, it's, you know, more, I think more money has been printed in the last six months than the last, uh, you know, hundred years or what, I don't know what the statistic is, but if you look at these charts of like USD and it's like, boom, it just goes way up in the last six months. Right. So, I mean, this is, if there's no better environment for Bitcoin than this, I mean, you couldn't have, no one wants a pandemic, but you couldn't have hoped for a better environment for Bitcoin to succeed than the one we're in right now. But, 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 you know, I, I think for a lot of us, though, like we take that for granted, right? It's like, how the hell does money printing connect to a Bitcoin price potentially going up? Like, did, like that, that connection is, I don't know. I find like it's lost upon most people. It's like, well, you know what I mean? Like, well, like how I mean, are those two things even connected? You look at other countries like Venezuela, where the, you know, the printing's out of control and the, the money gets devalued. And then you start looking at like your grocery store, you go to the grocery store and, you know, you, you know, you, you buy some apples and now they're, it's gone up a dollar and you don't really, you know, you don't really notice that at first, but things are going up and it's like prices like in Toronto, like, I mean, to get an average house now, it's like a million and a half dollars, right? It's like everything is going up and I think people start to wake up to that. And then you have free land, you know, the, uh, in Canada with these comments about, Hey, we got to unlock people's savings. And, you know, I think, you know, I think that's going to wake a lot of people up. And, you know, you know, back in the day in 2007, 2008, they had like the bailouts. Now, have you ever heard of the thing called bail-ins? What is that? So this is what they did in Cyprus. Oh, okay, where they right. Could yeah. Give your, your bank account a haircut. Yeah, just overnight. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. And did you know that they made that, that I, from what I heard, at least they made that legal in Canada a few years ago as well. Um, yeah, and so wow. maybe that's maybe that's what she's getting at, you know, with like incentivizing people to help out. But it's it's very, very interesting. And that and that and that hits the poor the most because wealthy people don't keep like all their money in a bank account. Right. Mm. So it really it really is a tax on the poor. Mm-hmm. And there was another I keep bringing up Twitter, but there was another just crazy rant between that Pierre guy and this finance minister last week where he was just like, what's the number? Like how, m- how many dollars right. do we print? Do we take for the bank account? Yeah, I saw that, and yeah. she just kept Very like basic, firing yeah. back. And she was like, how dare you even question? It was like, what? Wait, uh, hello, <laughs> what do you mean? Just, it's just a number, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why there is a transparency with this. It's like, we, we should know the amount of money there is that, you know, what is going to be printed, like as citizens of a country, like that should be like, we should be able to log into a website and see that. The fact that, you know, the opposition party has to like fight the, the finance minister for this information and she can be evasive about it is crazy. Yeah, I mean, well, well, my whole, like, this whole journey for me started with Ron Paul, right? And, like, whole whole audit the Fed and yeah. just learning all about, like, sound money. And uh, it's pretty crazy, yeah, that, that you know, uh, like, I mean, like, anyways, yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't even know much about, like, the Fed in general, but right. it just seems that, uh, you know, and I think that's the cool thing about Bitcoin is that I remember for the longest time, I would kind of like half know about all these like problems in the world, you know, whatever it may be. And 
and you think you're an expert and you're like right. you're trying, you'd be like, I, I got this figured out. Whereas like Bitcoin finally, it was like this, it was kind of a half baked project as well, right? But it was some, it was a place where instead of like getting angry all day, you could like put your kind of energy towards. And that's what I found. And uh, hey man, but just to go back to the kind of the car talk thing, I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, like one of my goals with this, this whatever the hell I'm doing Bitcoin stories thing is to kind of encourage more people to, to create, right? Not to just like consume. Um, and, and I think it's, and one of my goals is not to just, you know, like, it's not like the Adam backs of the world that can participate. Like there's, you know what I mean? Like you don't need to right. be a coder. Like, exactly. uh, like I've been interviewing lots of different types of people, singers, artists, comedians. Um, and so, um, so, I mean, you did say that maybe you, you kind of came to the conclusion that maybe uh, you know, comedy just doesn't belong in Bitcoin. But I wonder if you were to take another stab, uh, and, you know, now you probably have life and kids and, you know, stuff's come up. But if someone was out there kind of listening and being like, hey, look, I think I want to get out there and make stuff. Any advice for them? Or is there like an angle that you might take if you were to do some, some I don't know, skits today or whatever it is today? Yeah, no, I, I, I think there's definitely... There's a lot of opportunity out there. Um, one thing I've gotten into recently is NFTs. And I know Bitcoiners aren't really about the NFTs. Because talk, no, no. Of, talk to me about NFTs. Talk to me yeah. about NFTs. Because so I, I, a lot of people don't yeah. get it. But so, no, no, I, mean, no, I have some really like, I, I, I suck to like, the CEO of Unicoin has been like on my case about NFTs. And he's yeah. like, there's something big here. So and I don't I, get it. I'll be, I'll right. be honest. So yeah. I don't, and here's the thing. I don't know how big it is. I just find it interesting, right? It's like, I don't know if it's going to make you a million dollars or anything like that. I just like NFTs from a creative perspective and that's how I approach it, right? So when I see a lot of people like online kind of dissing them, it's like, well, you know, I'm, I think I'm coming at it from a different perspective because I'm not buying NFTs to profit off them, right? I kind of see, so, you know, in the art world, you have things like uh, limited di- limited edition prints where like an artist will produce say 10 or 20 copies of a piece of art and he'll sign them and number them and he'll sell them right so they're not really the original um, and you could you could reproduce it on your own right you could you could you could make a copy of the Mona Lisa right or whatever piece of art so but it's a signed um, piece of art from the artist and it has value in the market, right? It has, it has non-zero value in the market. So the market does value it. And that's what I kind of see um, NFTs as where the artist can, because the, the biggest criticism of NFTs is that, well, I could just copy the, the image, right? It's like, hmm. and then why, why do I need to pay for it? I can copy that in, in, image, it's on my computer. But it's like, it's the same argument like saying, you know, I can copy a limited edition print and I don't need to buy it, right? Mm. But it's like, the point is, it's like, this is a limited edition item from the artist signed and numbered. And what we're doing with the blockchain is that you can authenticate it, right? Where Mm. in the real world, you don't know if that signature is real, but now we can authenticate that, right? So, and I I see a lot of creative work uh, happening in NFTs. And I just think it's a fun space to be in because, you know, money is nice, but I, I, I like a little bit of fun as well. So yeah, we're, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I agree. I agree. Uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think, uh, I think fun is good. I think, I, I don't know. I feel like people need to have a bit more fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, cause sometimes like all this like central bank talk and regulatory talk and like, you know, um, like op return and all that stuff right. make my head hurt. And, and I, and I don't know, I kind of feel like Bitcoin, it does have like a, a bit of a fun side and a creative side and, you know, and, and it's like, how do, again, like how does, uh, how do people get more of that? Even, even myself, like I'm quite curious, you know, and then this is kind of why I'm doing this too. Cause like, uh, like right. I said, I, I, dude, I'm putting up like, I don't know, like an hour, two hours of like stuff, like right. almost every day. And it's not like, no one's telling me to do it. Um, and it's, you know, a little weird and awkward at times, but, um, but it's freaking fun. It's like, I like, don't know. I can't, wh- I can't, I don't know. I can't right. explain it. When you buy a piece of art and you mm. put it in your living room, you're mm. not thinking about 
well, what can I resell that for in five years? You're yeah. enjoying it. It's a conversation starter when you have friends over, right? Mm -hmm. That's the value in it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Bitcoiners are missing because they're coming at it from the angle of, well, how am I going to make money off that NFT? And it's like, well, that's not the point. Mm. You know, it's, 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 it's to have a little fun. And, yeah. and to that point, now I'm going to plug my NFT. So hey. right here, we, we came up with this. <laughs> let me just take it out of the, the case. Right here. So what we did was we took the Genesis block and we put it on a floppy disk and then we tokenized it. And there's a token underneath this hologram and the token is on counterparty on the Bitcoin blockchain. This is not an Ethereum NFT. This is a Bitcoin NFT. So you can get this at floppyblock.com. That's my, it. my project right now. I love it. I love it. So wait, what do I, so I, I could have um, okay, so what's Genesis on here? Block. Genesis yeah. block. You've got okay. the early writings of Satoshi. You've got um, the the early source code, like the pre-release source code of Bitcoin is on here. A bunch of different artifacts. The white paper is on here, right? So we're, we're and we're this is limited to twenty one. So we're only the making hell 20. did you get shit onto that disc? <laughs> you have so one of those. My, <laughs> my, I don't. My my partner. My partner is uh, Joe Looney. So he uh, he created Rare Pepe Wallet back in the day. So oh that was my yeah God. yeah. So basically the, the 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 grandfather or the father of NFTs, right? So do you he, know. Do you know Antoine? Antoine, I'm not sure. Antoine had from well, he, he told me and he showed me too. He had he has one Rare Pepe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I just, are they like super expensive or something? Some of them are. I mean, the, or they the most, were at one point. It was like the most expensive crazy. one. The one sold at auction was um, it was called Homer Pepe. It's sort of a green oh. version of Homer Simpson. It sold for forty thousand dollars. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. yeah and, that's uh, and, yeah. insane. Okay. Right. Okay. So, but, yeah. but your thing, you have the Genesis, you have all the writings yeah. of Satoshi. Okay. So, writings of Satoshi, the white paper, the Times of London cover, whatever we could squeeze onto one megabyte. We, we put on this disc and it's got a, it's tokenized. So we will only make 21 of these discs and it's, it's enforced by the token that's on counterparty on the Bitcoin blockchain. So that's our, our fun little project at the moment. Beautiful. Beautiful. I like, I like, I like it a lot. That's awesome, man. So what else, uh, what else, Mike, anything uh, in terms of, oh yeah. So, so I guess we, we didn't go too much into your, I guess your story, which is, is just, uh, which is all right. Um, we didn't, uh, but I was going to ask you one thing. So do you want to share any maybe thoughts or truths that you believe that most other Bitcoiners might, you know, disagree with you on in terms right. of like, I don't know, like a contrarian belief. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I've got many. I mean, I'm kind of seen as a bit of a skeptic. I mean, I love Bitcoin. I've been in Bitcoin. People think I'm a no coiner or an alt coiner or a shit coin or whatever, but really I only hold Bitcoin. And, but I, I am, I do have a critical eye towards Bitcoin. I'm not, you know, I, I don't just drink the Kool-Aid. Um, and the, the, the thing that is kind of bothering me lately is this sort of Michael Saylor cult. That's what talk I'll call to me, it. Talk to me about it. Yeah. So I mean, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Saylor has the scarce number cult, right? That, that's what, that's what he believes in. That's what he's invested in. And scarce numbers are important. That's, you know, it's, 21 million is, you know, a big part of Bitcoin, but that's all he sees. And he's, he's tweeted repeatedly about how we need to make nice with regulators and how we need to compromise on all sorts of things. And it's like, I don't know if, if the value of Bitcoin can be um, retained if we lose censorship, resistance and privacy. You know, if we, if we bend the knee for the regulators, the scarce numbers are going to fall as well. So that's sort of my contrarian view at the moment, where I see a lot of people who, like, they hold this guy up on a pedestal. And I mean, God bless them for putting half a billion dollars into Bitcoin that helps everyone. But, um, you know, when, when he's, it kind of rubs me the wrong way when he starts talking about, like, making nice with the regulators, because I, I'm at a fundamental level, I'm not sure he understands what he even bought. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, then, and then, then like the we, it's like, wait, it, right. Yeah. Wait, so we're, we're a we now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where you're going with this. Um, I think a lot about that too. I worry about that. And I, I wonder, you know, what is Bitcoin? And 
long term as more and more people gravitate towards it and use it and call it we doesn't it become them and right. like, like, like yeah. at, well, it, it's not a democracy right like that's another thing that people need to get clear like exactly. bitcoin is not a democracy it's not like you know we're, we're here to vote our way to to success yeah i think like, the next i mean the last mm. war on bitcoin was you know the the scaling debate small blocks versus big blocks the next war is going to be 10 times worse and it's going to be about transparency versus privacy and you know the the, the cypherpunks are going to want to yeah, have like in privacy enhancements like taproot and all this stuff and the Michael Saylors of the world, well, they'll be like, well, the regulators aren't going to like that. So maybe we're going to, you know, we're going to toe the line here. So uh, everyone kind of likes Michael Saylor right now, but we'll see what happens when he, he starts like uh, maybe fudding the, you know, some soft works in the future about privacy. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Well, it's cool. Because I mean, I, I, I don't think I ever said this publicly, but... I've like repeatedly thought that like the purpose of my podcast is to have everyone on besides Michael Saylor. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> you should have, if, if you'll come on, you can have him on though. I think he'd have an interesting perspective. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that just to, just to be a shit disturber. Cause I doubt he'd ever come on anyways. No, I'm Raul. Raul yeah. But I, I know what you mean though. I know what you mean. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Public company dude, yeah. hedge fund dude. But it's like coming in here and being like, no, we just need to, you know, listen to the regulators now. It's like, no, we need to listen to like Bitcoin and like what it stands for and what it, and like stay true to that ethos. And so, right. So that, 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 you know, and that's partially why another reason as to why I'm doing this too, right, is because as you know, I know a lot of these people in the space. I think Peter Todd's coming on the show this week. I'm going to get all these guys on there and just try and, you know what I mean? Like make everything a bit more like deconstructed a bit. And I mean, come yeah. on, people are at home now with this whole thing. And so just give people a bit of a bit more. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. So there's a lot of um, like a lot of podcasts out there. Right. But I don't think there are a lot of podcasts by insiders, by like people that have literally been building companies and doing events and right. been in the space for like 10 years or whatever, eight years. So I haven't seen that. And so my, my goal is kind of to bring a bit of that, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Um, okay. So, so, so you were mentioning, so I like that. I like that Michael Saylor. Um, let's not, let's not, uh, yeah, maybe that. Uh, okay. There's, there's some sort of like boat sailing comedic joke around there, but we'll just, we'll let it be. I the, tweeted the, something earlier about did like, you, did uh, you? Okay. Sailor, Sailor's Siren Song, right? Let me, the, let me just the, bring the it up. The boat has sailed or no? No. Well, no, let me just uh, bring up my Twitter here. I'm going to remember gotta, what the wording gotta, was. I'll read this off here uh where's my profile why i look yellow sorry i have a new setup here in my and i'm just playing around with my green okay screen. so this is my little poem for michael sailor so hit i wrote me up, hit me up. <laughs> so sailor's siren song will entice you with tales of nagu nagu being number go up in a state of intoxication you'll crash and be entombed know where the value comes from it's not the sacred amount Censor censorship resistance is the only thing that counts Retweet that shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been getting into music lately too. I want to like yeah. start creating some more beats. So maybe I I'll... remember listening. You had a great rap album, dude. That I made that thing on my iPhone in a day. Amazing. So, I so can't. I... That's amazing. It's okay. So that that's really cool to hear. That that's like. Uh... Okay, so that's nice to hear. I, I I think that might be the thing that puts me over the edge because I've been thinking <laughs> about going back to that. And uh, yeah, but here's my thing. Here's my thing is I had a similar conclusion to you. My conclusion was that nobody wants to hear about music. That was you know <laughs> what you, I, I'll re tweet it out. I'll retweet it. That was a great album. I loved it. <laughs> Okay, okay. Get that, no. get that brief fit girl. You know the brief fit girl. Get her to dance to it or oh, something. Yeah, yeah, it's so good, so good. Um, okay, well, so, 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 but, but here's my, but my conclusion is, is that every song, however, is not about Bitcoin. It's about love. Right. So my next Bitcoin album is love. Yeah. So Bitcoin is love. I could call it that. I, uh, I was gonna call my next album Bitcoin and love, or love and Bitcoin, love and Bitcoin. Right? Like it's like love. Everyone loves love. 
Yeah. <laughs> then you've got Bitcoin, which is really my agenda. That was essentially the idea behind the events. If you recall, I used to, at one point, I, they were called the Canadian Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. At one point we pivoted. We started calling them FinTech Canada. Right, yeah. Kind of like, well, you know, so the bankers, and everyone feel, would feel comfortable attending. And then uh, we just stacked it with like all Bitcoiners, guys like you, you yeah. know. Um, okay, so so I got I got a couple of more. Um, you got a few more minutes, or you got a yeah, you got a dip? I'm good, good to go. Okay, 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 okay. So a couple more questions for you. Have you been following this whole kind of like AI thing? I know it's a little bit disjointed and disconnected. A- I mean, I mean, like in- artificial intelligence. And when I say AI, I don't mean like like narrow bands of artificial intelligence. I don't mean like a Tesla driving itself or a Google search engine or even Bitcoin being a form of AI. I'm talking about like the singularity, like general I mean, AI, something no that like more, Elon Musk and these guys are talking yeah, about I mean, lately. And- no more than headlines. I haven't really, that's not really my thing, but I've, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. as much as the average person knows probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, I'm just curious if like, if you if you think about that in the sense that, um, like job loss, I guess. I don't know. I know it sounds like kind of. I feel like a luddite even saying this stuff, but like, I I, I guess I, I wonder about um, like the advancement of technology and how it may you know impact like job loss at, at scale. Um, so just like one example is like the Tesla, like the fact that the cars drive themselves or they like yeah. five years out, all of them do or whatever. Well, you walk into um, a McDonald's now and you're, you're ordering at a kiosk, right? So that's, that's yeah. someone's job that doesn't exist anymore. So like automation, robotics, all right. of this is like advancing at a, like a very like accelerated pace. So I guess what I'm getting at is, is like, do you, do you, have you ever heard of something called Ubi, like universal basic income, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, so that's something that I think the Canadian government was kind of like tossing around. I know a lot of Bitcoiners are kind of against it. I am too, just because just generally the idea of like governments taking money from one person and giving it to other isn't, doesn't sit yeah. well with me. I think, but that already happened. So and again, I'm not, mm. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm for UBI. Mm. I'm kind of on the fence as well, but especially in Canada, we already do that. I mean, it's just, we have socialized healthcare and a lot of things. Mm. So, I mean, if you were, I mean, if you just want to roll it all up into one thing and here's your monthly UB and maybe that's more cost effective than all these other programs, Mm -mm. maybe that's better. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see where it all goes. Hey, um, anything? So, by the way, are you, are you, I did see some podcasts. Oh, you did a podcast with Fred recently. How did that one go? I I kind of saw a few minutes of it with Fred Pye, you and Brad Mills. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three IQ. How did that go? I was, uh, it was was, good. I wanted to check it out. Yeah. I mean, I, it was mostly a lot of my own curiosity because I'm an investor in, in, um, QBTC and it's like with QBTC. So for the audience, it's like, you can put, um, QBTC within a TFSA or an RRSP, RRSP, these are kind of tax deferred uh, investment vehicles. So it's a, a way of getting exposure to Bitcoin and your, your capital gains aren't taxed. But at the same time, as volatile as Bitcoin is, it has what's called a NAV premium and a net asset value premium on top of the price of Bitcoin that tends to be even more volatile than Bitcoin itself. Like I've seen it fluctuate from like 35% down to 2%. And while you want exposure exposure to Bitcoin, you might not want exposure to this this NAV premium. Um, so I just want to get him on to kind of explain how this works. And I think the idea is like they're trying to work towards eliminating this NAV premium, and it'll take a bit of time. But you compare against something like Grayscale, and Grayscale, I think right now it's got twenty or thirty percent uh, NAV premium. And a premium here's the thing: a premium on its own is not so bad if it was consistent. Like you wouldn't mind paying a 30% premium if it stays at 30% because when you sell, you're, you know, it's the same. The problem is you don't want to buy something and the NAV premium is 30%. And then when you sell, it's at 2% because you've lost, you theoretically lost a a lot of money, right? Um, So I would say right now, if right now the NAV premium is pretty low, it's it's between two and 5%. So if you're looking at, you know, wanting to get some exposure to Bitcoin um, within a TFSA, so you're not having to pay capital gains l- down the line, maybe look into QBTC. That's, it, I mean, it's, to Canadians, that's really our only option, I think. 
What what was the final kind of TLDR on that, by the way? Like, why is the NAV so? Why does it get so high? I mean, I think it's it well. I mean, it trades. Was. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, it, it's mm. it's it's a, it's a stock that trades, right? So I mean, it's supply and demand. There's more demand. The price goes up, and what happens is when it starts to really get high, I believe they open a new round. Right. Um, so they take in more money, and then the NAV drops. I'm I might be explaining completely wrong. I, a lot of the stuff he said went over my head but uh from what I, he kind of like it kind of made sense to me at the time and i, I i've invested in it myself so well people can Frost. people can maybe check it out what, what, what's yeah. your what's your youtube channel or how do people you know kind of get yeah. your like your twitter handle and all that kind yeah, of yeah so uh on on twitter uh, everywhere it's mike and space so if you go to twitter you put in mike and space it's there on youtube it's mike and space mike and space right yeah Hey man, this was uh, this was pretty fun. I know it's pretty late and then Sunday you got the kids and stuff, so yeah, I don't want to keep you for too there. long. But uh, yeah, it was good catching up. You know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if yeah, if you want to do this again, just let me know. We can sure. hop back on and, and chat. But uh, I'll let you go. Thank you, Sunny. Have a good All night. Right, take care. Bye bye, Mike. Bye.